Given that we're quickly approaching what will in the future be known as the 20s, we figured we'd give you some insight into the happenings of our 20s nearly 100 years ago. The 1920s were a time of change. Some huge things happened in them that helped to shape the world we live in today. We're here to share with you some of the more significant advances, the monumental moments, and some of the fun stuff too. This is a century ago, the 1920s. Number 11. The League of Nations Some of the earliest big events to happen in the 1920s were the official founding and first meeting of the League of Nations. On January 10, 1920, the League was officially founded after a long-fought battle by many to establish it in the first place. Prior to the organization, there was the IPU, Interparliamentary Union, and suggestions for the new group date back to around 1914. But it wasn't until 1919, at the Paris Peace Conference, that draft proposals about how the group would run and what it would be all about began being submitted. Robert Cecil, Jan Smuts, and U.S. President Woodrow Wilson all put forth their drafts, and after much negotiation, approval was finally given to create the League on January 25, 1919. It was decided that all of the member states would have representatives, the General Assembly, and it would have an Executive Council as well as a permanent Secretariat. Wilson, then acting President of the United States, fought hard and pushed for the joining of the group. He even won a Nobel Prize for his attempts. But the country couldn't come to an agreement, thus they never joined. The first meeting occurred on January 16, 1920 in Paris, France. Number 10 Worst Case Scenario Back in the 1920s, the idea of any big problems on our own soil wasn't really a thing. But on September 16, 1920, the worst was realized when a horse-drawn carriage made its way to the financial district of Manhattan in New York, a carriage stuffed full of devastating material. At 12.01, a massive blast tore through the area and 30 people immediately lost their lives. Another eight people succumbed to wounds they sustained later on. Hundreds were injured but survived and the event went down in history as the worst of its kind until Timothy McVeigh and his delivery van rocked Oklahoma City. The perpetrators were never captured, although it's believed the atrocity could have been committed by Galleonists, Italian anarchists. Number 9. J. Edgar Hoover Famed leader of the FBI, J. Edgar Hoover began accumulating more and more power throughout the early 1920s and eventually went on to become the Bureau's director in 1924. But back in the early 1920s, it was known simply as the Bureau of Investigation. Where he really began to shine was during what became known as the Palmer Raids. In response to several deadly bombings in 1919, Mitchell Palmer, the Attorney General of the U.S., started a campaign to locate, seize, and deport foreign radicals. Any guess at who organized the raids? A young, law school graduate named J. Edgar Hoover. The biggest raid came early January 1920, when more than 3,000 people were arrested, including those who just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. But Hoover thrived, despite the backlash faced by Palmer, and in 1921 he was named deputy head of the bureau. And as we said, three short years later he became the director. He held the position until he passed away in 1972. Number 8. Chanel Number 5 as we know, Chanel is hugely successful, but back in 1921, when Chanel No. 5 was released, the company was only 12 years old. With the introduction of Chanel No. 5, the company soared to new heights. The formula for the fragrance was compounded by Ernest Beau, a French chemist and perfumer, and it was the first perfume ever launched by Gabrielle Coco Chanel. Part of the reason for the success of the product was Chanel's attempt to appeal to women who were neither trying to be viewed as overly proper nor as, well, extremely improper if you know what we're saying. The bottle it comes in has changed slightly over the years, but the design is very similar to the original, and it is credited with being a large part of the allure of the perfume. The number 5 comes from Chanel's affinity for the number itself, as it appeared in many aspects of her life and had a kind of mystic, spiritual meaning to her. She fully decided on the number when she was presented with sample scents 1 through 5 and 20 through 24 and picked number 5 as her favorite. Number 7. Insulin while insulin was first found back in 1869 by a medical student by the name of Paul Langerhans, it wasn't until the early 1920s that scientists figured out a way to extract and use it. 
Frederick Banting, a Canadian medical scientist and surgeon, along with assistant Charles Best, figured out a way to isolate and extract it. The first injection they gave was to Leonard Thompson, a diabetic 14-year-old boy on January 11, 1922, who suffered a terrible allergic reaction as the extract was very impure. Twelve days later, Banting and Best had improved the extract and gave another injection, which proved successful. A few more patients were treated, and the duo figured out a reasonably good extraction method, allowing them to extract large amounts whenever they wanted, though the method of preparation for use wasn't all that spectacular. They then sought the help of Eli Lilly and Company, who had offered assistance back in 1921. George B. Walden, the company's head chemist, discovered isoelectric precipitation, the preparation method needed to produce highly refined insulin, and it soon became available to the public. Number 6. Winter Olympics the first ever Winter Olympics was held in Chamonix, France between January 25th and February 5th, 1924. They were held the same year as the Summer Olympics, which may seem strange now, but the Winter and Summer Olympics continued to be held the same year until 1992. These newly established, exciting games were organized by the French Olympic Committee, and it was because of a call by the people for equality for winter sports that the games got their shot in the first place. Ice hockey had been hosted as an event in Antwerp in the 1920 Summer Olympics. Figure skating had been held in both Antwerp and the 1908 Summer Olympics in London. But winter sports had previously been limited seeing as the games were held in summer. So the games were accommodated and held at the foot of Chamonix Mont Blanc in Haute Savoie, France. Events include figure skating, speed skating, ice hockey, bobsleigh, curling, cross-country skiing, ski jumping, Nordic combined, and military patrol. Number 5. The Great Gatsby on lists of the most popular books of all time, and on the favorite books list of many readers, one will typically find The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. It is a book that has captured the imaginations and hearts of many, although at the time of its publication in 1925, it was pretty much a gigantic flop. It sold very poorly, and many reviewers and critics didn't like it, and in its first year in print, it only sold 20,000 copies. It was a book that Fitzgerald had hoped would produce sales around 75,000, but unfortunately for him, it didn't happen. He had wanted to create something new and exciting, which he did, but it took some time for it to really catch on. Unfortunately, Fitzgerald passed away in 1940 before seeing his novel become a grand success, and he went into the earth believing himself to be a failure. The book was revived during the Second World War and was added to high school curricula in the United States, and has since spawned many film and stage adaptations. It is now a literary classic. It's too bad Fitzgerald didn't get to see his dream realized. Number 4. The Television the television took a significant step forward in 1926, when John Logie Baird, a Scottish engineer and inventor, demonstrated the first functional television system. Baird is known to be one of the very first inventors of the mechanical television, as well as the first color television system and the wholly electronic color television picture tube to be demonstrated in public. On January 26, 1926, he demonstrated the televisor in his laboratory for a reporter from the Times, as well as members of the Royal Institution. His invention could display 12.5 frames per second, and it could broadcast tone-graduated, live, moving images, which no one else had done before. In 1928, his demonstration of the first-ever color transmission was nearly as monumental and groundbreaking as the televisor demonstration. He's considered a pioneer for his contributions to the world of TV and has been honored with many awards, and in 2015, he was inducted into the Scottish Engineering Hall of Fame. Number 3. Lindbergh's Flight Charles Lindbergh, the famed aviator, was once an unknown, obscure U.S. airmail pilot. He accomplished this incredible zero-to-hero feat by becoming the first person to complete a non-stop solo flight across the Atlantic in 1927. He was hardly 25 when he made his legendary flight, and he'd only flown for his first time as a passenger just five years earlier. He did get to take the controls during his first flying lesson just a few days later, although he didn't even make his first ever solo flight until 1923. For the extraordinary accomplishment, which took 33 and a half hours and covered 3,600 statute miles, he was awarded the Medal of Honor, the highest decoration the military gives. And he was just an officer in the U.S. Army Air Corps Reserve. Number 2. Mickey Mouse 
In 1928, an animated short called Steamboat Willie by Ub Iwerks and Walt Disney hit the air, and it's widely been considered as the debut of Minnie and Mickey Mouse. But the truth is, the two had shown up in Plain Crazy, another short that had been test screened a few months earlier. Either way, Mickey Mouse first hit the screen in 1928, and cartoons, not to mention the world, have never been the same since. We've seen some pretty exciting stuff that happened back in the 20s already, and we still have one more event to go. But first we'd like to ask, if you could have lived in one decade in the 20th century, which would it have been and why? Throw your answers up in the comments below. Number 1. Wall Street Now things seemed to be going pretty great in the 1920s. That is until Wall Street collapsed and the Great Depression began. It all kicked off on October 24th, which is nicknamed Black Thursday, when at the opening bell, the market lost 11% of its total value. The collapse continued for days, and by October 29th, Black Tuesday, the share prices collapsed on the New York Stock Exchange. It then fluctuated back and forth for a while, but nothing could stop the country from sliding headfirst into the Great Depression, which lasted for 12 years. The crash was the most devastating in U.S. history, and it wasn't just the United States that felt its effects, but the entire world. The worst of the crash came on July 8, 1932, when the market closed at 41.22, the lowest level it reached in the whole 20th century. The 20s had been good for while they lasted, but as they say, nothing lasts forever. If you enjoyed this video, do us a favor and give it a like. Subscribe to our channel below or by clicking on our logo right here on this screen so that you can keep up with all of our great uploads. And check out this next video that we handpicked just for you.